is good. That is good. That was kind of chill, I think. Felt that way. Yeah. There's no like, there's no Jack Shaney uh, yapping in the event chat when he loses. Nah, he was busy playing Valorant. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a little bit smaller, but those come, those happen sometimes. They're a good moment to kind of tr play around, maybe try to get a little more engaged with certain individuals. You can't. You get a chance to focus on people who you might not otherwise when not everybody is there. And eh, sometimes it's nice just to have a more relaxing, less bloodthirsty top of the line thing. This kind. This is more likely to happen too as you get closer to the, like the diamond bracket and stuff where all the everybody's already got their seats, everybody's settled in, or they're at least confirmed and. While they might want a higher seed, they're more concerned about the fact that they're just in and that's great. So then they're like, I'm not... I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm in. That's all that matters. So, I've got a few questions for you today. If you would... I mean, I would assume that you want to hear yeah. them. Go uh, ahead. Because you're here. So my first one, we're, we're we're gonna we're gonna hit a couple more general questions this time. Maybe maybe go over some stuff we've brought up in previous conversations. Just you know, sometimes it's nice. Like I I know I know you've got a bunch of stages that you generally like. I uh, we've seen your your love for River Drift happen in many events. Uh, but... I don't love River Drift. <laughs> What are your some go to what what are your go to stages when you're competing? Does it change for each tur like does it change for each tournament? Uh disregarding the fact that certain ones have different rule sets. Like would you Yeah. Uh I don't know. No, it not just it just changes but depending on what I'm most uh co comfortable in or like What's the word? Confident. So it's kind of a day by day thing, like some days you just like, no, nah, I'm really feeling this stage and you kind of just want to go there a lot. And then other days you're yes, like- Yes, more of uh, how good I think my decks are on that map. Mm. And that can be a little difficult for people to predict then because I mean, your decks are constantly changing, shifting and evolving. You have a yeah. lot of different things going on all the time. Like this is, to say the least, a uh, this game is quite the interest of yours. Yes, but I I think I do uh, tend to ban two lane a lot because it's uh, kind of RNG. Yeah, that one's a little weird. So it's just a yeah. just a little weird. So, we've got a bunch of cards from of varying lengths and sizes. One, two, three, go all the way up to, what is it, we've got 18 is the current big? Yeah, all the yeah. way up to 18. Uh, do you think we should add like 19 or 20s? No. <laughs> Fair enough. If there was a 19, what character do you think would be the the 19? Joe. Pretty obvious. Joe? Yeah. I'm, I'm not sure. Sir, I, I the, the King Salmon, you know? Oh. The new one. Oh. Yeah, yeah make him the strongest. That would be cool. Yeah. It also makes sense. Yeah, I can see that. The, yeah, the big monster. No, that one? I want it to be like, it doesn't matter what's on the field. It's just like, 
the most broken card. It's the only card that gets bad because it's it always wins. You play it and it just eats whatever it's played on top of. It might as well be a special card. The but only it... card that's banned can like among among this card. Yeah. The yeah, Amoogus, that card is it's like way too strong. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah! We need some bad cards in table turf. <laughs> Actually, yeah, we already have we already have Snatcher. I was gonna ask you what card you would want banned from Table Turf, but I'm gonna assume Snatcher um, is the one you ban. No, because it's a bad card, so it doesn't matter. I would probably ban uh, Splash Mob, maybe. Splash Mob? Really? Or maybe Gnarly Eddie. You know, I could definitely see Gnarly Eddie. It's kind of just, it's a really good card that everybody builds around. Yeah. Uh, and. And then we got, instead instead of the usual weird question, we could still do the weird question, but we got a different one, like, we don't need to get into the specifics unless you want to, but Splatoon is a huge universe. It's got so many different things going on. It's got a bunch of different gameplay elements. We've got the grind rails, we've got respawning, uh, we have Salmon Run. If there was like a gameplay element that you can experience in Splatoon, maybe even the fans, what gameplay element would you want to see implemented in Tabletop? We don't have to figure out how it gets implemented, just what would be cool do you think? I don't know, it seems like everything already in, in Tabletop, like as cards, or do you mean just like somehow gameplay in it yeah like a new gameplay element like for a example maybe the fan maybe, like if the fan is a thing in here and you play a uh, card over the fan it moves a, it moves that chunk of the stage over to like let's say it's like two lane and there's just like on one part there's the fan you put it on the fan and it moves to the other two lane and it carries that over Bruh, I just, I just thought about the most toxic thing. <laughs> Imagine if that is like an an extra wave. So it's just like randomly in any match, you can just have another wave, another turn, <laughs> extra wave. Oh god, it's just... You know that more often than not, what would happen for most... Like, it would be so wild because more often than not, what happens is like extra wave, and both players are sitting there, be like, "I've played by two, three twelves. <laughs> what do you want me yeah. to do? Pass, pass. <laughs> the game ends. But sometimes it's just that person being like, "Oh man, I miscalculated by a single turn. I'm so dead. Extra wave. Wait. <laughs> oh, that yeah. would mess the game up so bad." <laughs> That's beautiful. I love it. I want to talk a bit about the grand finals because it was pretty crazy in my opinion. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's talk about the grand finals. Like both the first two games, I had super terrible hands. Oh. Especially the second game. Like in the second, I think in both games by turn three or four, I had the, all the smallest cards available. They were all in my hand. Yeah, no, that second game on Thunderpoint, I think, yeah, you had a decent, like it was passable. It was a passable hand and you decide to shuffle it and you got like splatter yeah. color screen. I don't think it was a passable hand. I did get an even worse hand, but that deck, I have a lot of openers and big cards. And yeah. I also like the only good card was Octavio, and then it was just trash. So I think it was a good decision to redraw. I just got super unlucky and got them in even worse hand. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely the right call to go for the shuffle, but it's just like RNG is going to do that to you. And despite that, or 
Yes, yeah, so, like in that situation, hindsight 2020. If you knew that the hand you were going to get was what you got, would you have stayed with that main hand? Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Because at least they had an opener. Yeah. And hopefully you draw another thing afterwards. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the only reason I won, I mean, not only did he also open with garbage hand, because he used his only 312 as his opener, but then uh, turn two, I should have just instantly lost at, after turn two because that charger was super. That was good. so aggressive. That was such a greedy one, and he was rewarded for it. Wasn't it. even greedy. It was just good. Yeah, it it just cut you off. Yeah, but uh, later when I went through his base with tent attack, he didn't really do anything about it. He just played a blaster. So that's how I get got to win. If he just played something else more in his base, he would have just won. It doesn't matter really what cards he that he plays. I just realized something. This is completely off topic. We should start hosting mobbies in the show. The show? Like table turf lands? No, like can you? I... That is like LAN only. Oh, that's if LAN. If you're connected oh. to the same network, that's, oh, that's where you play Table okay. Turf offline. Oh, that's lame. I don't know, this looks actually... so much cooler. I have actually used the show to play Table Turf. That's Pretty awesome. Sick. But, uh, yeah, last question for you. Uh, give us a fun fact about your Splatoon OC. Uh... No, it's been... mm, uh... <laughs> <laughs> It's not always the easiest. And it's been a little while. The, fa the favorite uh, special weapon is Ink Storm. You know what? I respect that. I think that's... As much as I like the other specials, I just like a big brain cloud painting everything. It, there's just something satisfying about that. I respect... What was it? Asa or Asa? It was Asa, right? It was Asa. 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 <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I respect Asa's uh, preference here. It's, it's a... It's a real- it's a good special. It's a fun special. And you can kind of swim in it. But yeah. You can heal now. True. Thank you so much for the interview. Congratulations on first place. And best of luck in your future in tournaments. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Alright. Coming up next, we've got one more person to poke around to quiz. To pester. And that is Maxim. Uh, who managed to get a pretty impressive second place. Had some really good games against Aaron. And managed just to secure his footing. And get, yeah, a generally impressive position. Chat, if any of you have any questions you want to ask as well, do not be afraid to put them in the comments. I, I know there's a bit of a delay, but these conversations go on long enough. And if I see it, I might consider asking that question to him. I've been looking into extra work while recent or since it's been up. I didn't realize it yesterday. Granted, I was either tired or I was working, so I didn't really notice it. But today, I've 
done a little bit of labbing calculations and stuff and I've kind of got a basic route on what to expect for the first bit uh, just just for information so people know I, I can share it right here just to make sure everybody else is as ready as possible for extra work too We've got, so you've got your four weapons. You've got the Hydra, which is going to be really good at taking down on everything from a distance. You've got the Rapid Blaster, which is going to be good at snapping down the fish sticks and is going to be useful in handling. I mean, it's a generally a good utility one. It's not exceptional in most ways, but it's pretty good. Oh yeah, uh, Hydra also has Splashdown. So you have a really good uh, super with that. Rapid Blaster gets Killer Whale, which is not the greatest. But, I mean, it, it's probably one of your better options for getting rid of Flyfish. And then, yeah, it gets rid of Fish Sticks. Uh, can help out with the Steel Heads. Uh, it can... The Stringers will just die to it. You get the sloshing machine, which, I don't know, that feels like the most niche out of the four weapons. But you get Wave Breaker, which is going to be really good for clearance. For when, if your group is starting to feel overwhelmed. And then lastly, you get the Splattershot Jr. with a Booyah Bomb, which, honestly, that one feels like it's going to get the most job done. If it's put in the right hands. Like, the others are really good. But if you get somebody who... Actually, I could, I would probably say the sloshing too. If you have somebody who knows what to do with the Booyah and Splattershot Jr., they're going to just clear things. And the sloshing can be a really, really useful and just handling a lot of situations. I feel like those would be your two big ones that you really wanted to go for. There, Maximum! Maximum, interrupt me! We're waiting for you. I'm rambling. Hello. Congratulations on second place. How's Thank you feel? very much. It feels amazing. Like last, last TBO, third place, now second place. And next, first place. No, um, it was, it was really fun. That's good. So you, you're trending upwards in your performances and your capabilities. Tell me, what's, what are you doing to, differently that's been getting you the, these better results? It could be because my um, uh, Splatoon competitive team disbanded and now I'm just more into table turf and have more time to practice my decks and make more decks and you know that's, that's both unfortunate and very great and <laughs> fortunate you know double edged blades and all that yeah now i've got a couple of questions for you if you don't mind me asking them though i assume you do because you or you want them asked because you literally joined the vc you, you joined <laughs> have me poke you with questions yeah so uh qu question one there's you you have 37 oranges uh your friend has 12 apples and you give your no your the first question is what are some go-to stages for you when playing turtle turf and why um my most Counter pick and uh, selected stages were uh, Thunder and Lakefront because that are the stages where my decks are the best, I think. And also my Gerda of Battle and Battle to the Metal decks are pretty solid too, and I just avoid other stages where my decks are not really good and yeah fair enough 
What makes your deck in Lakefront seem like it's such a good deck to you? What particularly makes you really like that deck? I, I like my uh, openers. Like I have three openers which are all very great. Uh, they work with my base combo and have a, a good slosher combo. And also my other opener options are uh, not bad. And the combo potential with uh, the stringers and the reflux, for example, are also not bad. And my two go tubers. Fair enough. Yeah, you've got a lot of really solid tools in there, in that kit. Now, I do want to poke you about, on Thunder Points, your, your match against the Open, what happened to there? You had such a strong opening. Oh, um, <laughs> I knew that was coming. Yeah, uh, I honestly, know. I wasn't going to bring up these questions, that question until you open, because I, I, my questions weren't specifically the tournament. And then Yopin's like, I really want to talk about this. I'm like, well, now I want to know from you. Like, what happened? Yeah, I like that uh, spot with the, where he played the T-Tech and just invaded me. Yeah. Is that the situation? Well, there, there was a bunch of things that happened there. There was that, you got the Charger to completely wall Yovan out. Like, he told me yeah. he, would, he, he, he was on the verge of just wanting to resign there. I blundered so bad. I, I also like my jelly play to go even further in his base, but I I don't know why I decided to play my Grisco uh, in the top right and not defend where uh, when he played his his T tech I know to um, invade my my free space and uh, then he. Played his big man and big man two and had way more had much space and I just could have avoided that if I uh, just defended and not played my crystal brain dead in his base. So learning is a very important part of any competitive game. To be able to learn and recognize where your mistakes are, to be able to make notes and record that uh, to further improve your play as you move that further down in your competitive career. So let me ask you this question then: What did you learn from that game, and what? How do you do you feel you could utilize what you've learned in the future? Um, no. Especially on that game, like playing uh, more defensive and um, yeah, I don't, I don't know where 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 I can um, improve that much. Do you think your um, deck might have had a couple of issues with that situation? Yeah. That you yeah. Are you thinking of Overall, one? my my decks are not the best. I I have some really good decks in my opinion, like on Deck Ground or Thunder, but in other maps they they are just not not that good. Are you thinking of going back and watching the game just to see if you can make any more personal notes? Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think I will rewatch the entire stream or like the games I played. Um, yeah. Fair enough. Uh, so we've got cards that go from 1, 2, 3, 8, so all the way up to 18. Uh, my question on for you on this is like, We've got a lot of pretty hefty cards that have a lot of reach. Do you think? Do you think we should add more? Like, do you think we should reach nineteen or even twenty? 
What do you think those cards would be like? What characters would they represent? Um, I like Nintendo has to make the shapes in which they come uh, good, and maybe add another a special point to special them uh, when you go to 19 or 20, because I, I think Marie and Pearl are fine because their uh, shapes are not game breaking, but if you add even more uh, points to a card that may game, that may break the game when they're just too large and you can um, just your opponent can't make anything when you place those cards in a specific um, uh, region. Fair enough. Uh, and we've got a couple, couple more questions. So these ones are going to be a little more silly. They're going to be a little more fun, involve a little bit of creativity. Uh, first one, we, we, we've seen Splatoon Table Turn for a while now. It's gotten really settled in. The mechanics are pretty straightforward and well to understand. Uh, and the world of Splatoon is much like that. We've got so many different things. We've got the fans, we've got the grind rails. You got super jumps and respawns. You've got mains and subs which both are uh, portrayed as in cards, but if you could add a gameplay element from the Splatoon world into Table Turf, what gameplay element would you add? Not turn it into a card, but like mm -hmm. the mechanic. Oh, that's an, that's an interesting question. Yeah. Maybe like a uh, Switch? third or grid row that you can uh, play a card um, like uh, you have to play cards to uh, a space of you next to it uh, but what if you could just um, do a squid row um, basically and can place a card where no, um, where no uh, turf of you is nearby, like one um, field away. Like I think that could be fun. That would be pretty interesting. I like that. That could be neat. Like it turns into a little bit of like a tactics game where your character, you have your base character yeah. that has like a movement of like maybe two spaces. And then once yeah. you move, then like like that initial special block is kind of just lifted from the game and just moves freely. Like you can't get special from it, but it moves freely and you can like position it wherever you want and then you can paint from there. You can even go into enemy turf. Yeah. That would be fun. That could be really fun. That's a good answer. Lastly... Give me a fun fact about your Splatoon OC. Um, I only play Inklings because I never bought um, Splatoon 2, so I never um, like uh, knew when the Octolings were even introduced into the game. And I just stick with my inkling from Splatoon 1. Your, your character's just grown with you, so you've kind of just stuck with yeah. the character that you've been with this entire time. That's fair, I can respect that. Yeah, that's, that's about it. Thank you so much, Maxim, for joining me for this interview, and congratulations on second place. Yeah, thank you very much. Best of luck in your future tournaments and look forward to seeing you more. Oh, there's one more question from chat. One more question. I. <laughs> uh... Oh, I need to turn that down. I. Uh... BG sake, BGC win when? <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to win the next uh, BGC. Of course. Of 
Forrest. You got this. I believe in you. Alright. Take care. And that's going to be it for us. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you all so much for being a part of all this. And I hope you all enjoyed this table turf tournament. Oh, uh, it's no longer Kikai. Uh, that's supposed to be me. Whatever. I'm Kikai now. No, I'm the leaf. But thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you in future table turf tournaments. Ciao!